Hello, my Grace Christian Academy art fans. I uh, want to talk to you about our next project. We're going to start the demo here on how to create something beautiful in this style of Wayne Tebow, our pastry artist, so to speak. Well, first thing I need to let you know, if you're in second and third grade, you have a good white piece of drawing paper left in your packet that may say, not may, it will say, monochromatic portrait. Erase that. There's been a change in plans. So you will use that good white drawing paper that says monochromatic portrait for this project. In the same way, fourth and sixth grade, yours should say perspective landscape or perspective. You are going to erase that and you're gonna use this piece of paper for your Wayne Tebow creation. So just wanted to get that off uh, the bat. Just get that out in the open right away. This is the paper that you will use. Now we will still be doing the perspective drawing for fourth and sixth grade, but we'll be doing it next week. So you'll have a new packet by then that you'll be picking up on May 4th that has fresh supplies for the next three weeks coming up, and your perspective project supplies will be part of that. Second and third grade, stay tuned. You'll get your packet on May 4th with supplies for new projects as well. All right, so we know what paper we're using. Let's start off drawing some delicious treats. So you know me, what I like to start with is a sketch before we commit to the good paper. So be sure you have a few pieces of some computer paper. And let's start with the most basic. Let's start with some cupcakes, shall we? And then we'll move on to cakes. And then you will have the choice as to which ones you wanna do for your final project. And here we go. Okay, so I have my paper and I'm going to turn it in the portrait position because I'm going to choose, first of all, to draw a single cupcake. And this is how it goes. We are gonna start off with a basic shape, kind of right in the middle of the paper, and we are going to draw an oval. Now here's the catch. I kind of adjust as I go along, so where I started, I may not want to end, but I can always come in with my eraser and that's the first step. I kind of have an oval, it's not overly perfect, but you know when you bake a piece of uh, cake, or you bake a, a cupcakes or cake, it doesn't necessarily turn out absolutely symmetrically perfect. So we're okay with this. And there is my oval. Now I'm gonna draw the sides of the cupcake, which are nothing more than straight lines, but they're gonna tilt inward just a little bit. So I'm gonna come downward, and from this very edge, I'm gonna come downward. Notice I didn't start in here. All right, now I'm gonna show you real quick. You can do that. If you have your oval and you start inside a little bit, then it looks like a muffin or a cupcake that kind of went over the top. So it isn't the end of the world if you move in a little bit. But I'm going to make mine, as I showed you, oval, and I'm gonna come out straight out from the very edge of my oval, straight down, I should say, and there it is. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another curved line here. I'm not gonna make it straight. When I make it straight, it flattens this out and then it doesn't look rounded in 3D. Curved lines describe curved things and a cupcake is curved. So this bottom line is gonna be an echo of this line and it is going to curve from one point to the other. There is the base of my cupcake. Great. Now I'm gonna do something fancy with my icing. So I am going to start off and I'm gonna kinda of start way over towards one side and I'm gonna do a curve a little bit above and I'm gonna go up and up and then I'm gonna go bump and bump. And now I have what looks like a lump of icing. To make this complete, of course, I have to erase what is the back of the cupcake inside of the icing because the icing is not clear. We can't see through it. It's thick and sweet and delicious. And there, ladies and gentlemen, right away, we already see the makings of a pretty beautiful cupcake with icing. Now it's time to add a few details. I might wanna take this dent line and bring it down in here a little bit. 
to show that when I'm decorating my icing, I'm doing a swirl. And I might continue this dent in a little bit to show my icing swirly. All right, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the curvy edge of the cupcake, paper cup. And so I'm gonna do my little scalloped edges right there. Okay, that makes it look like mine isn't a paper cup. All right, the next step is I'm going to kind of do a slanty line that goes up, curves, and comes back down. One, then I'm gonna aim for here. Two, skinny, as you can see. I'm gonna come up in here. Three, ooh, that's really skinny, it's not even touching. I'm gonna make that a little wider. What am I gonna do? A race in here. All right, very little. See my next spot? I'm gonna curve up in here. Here's one, curve up in here. And my last one is gonna lean just like the edge of the cupcake paper, and it's gonna go up in that spot. Well, holy cow, I have the makings of a beautiful cupcake. Now, some of you like cherries. So all that you do to draw a cherry is put a circle on the top and a race inside the circle because the cherry is not made of glass. We can't see through it. Now I'm gonna take a line and make a little dip, just a little curvy dip like that. And touching up against that is where my stem will come out. Yes, cherry. Those of you that hate cherries don't have to put a cherry on top. You could put a strawberry instead. So let me get rid of my cherry. And here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make a pointy bottom, almost like a heart, but I'm not gonna come way in. Just like a little heart up here, yes? And then I'm gonna need that little curvy line. And then I'm gonna do maybe a little leaf on top to show my strawberry. And when you're coloring your strawberry red, remember there are little yellow speckles on a strawberry that you might wanna leave. Okay, so we've covered two fruits, cherries and strawberry on top. I'm gonna leave the strawberry. I do love both, but I'll leave the strawberry for now. And let's talk about what we could add. Well, we could do sprinkles. And you know, sometimes sprinkles are just tiny rectangles of bright colors. So I'm gonna just draw them randomly. That means they're going this way and that way. They're not lined up in a perfect row. And there's how you would add sprinkles. You might want to have heart-shaped sprinkles. Why not? I've seen those. They're perfect for decorating cupcakes for Valentine's Day, right? So you can add heart-shaped ones with your <coughs> rectangle ones, right? Okay, I've got it. Now, right now, my cupcake is floating in outer space. It's not touching anything, it's not sitting anywhere. So the last step would be to draw a line that stops, comes out the next, and boom. It is now sitting on a table. Now we could just leave it like this, or for those of you that wanna get extra fancy, we can put this on a plate. So I'm gonna start by coming out the side and I'm gonna mark, eyeball it right across. And I'm gonna start here, and I'm gonna make an oval that tilts down, and my oval's gonna come up, boom. And because this is a plate, I'm gonna add just a skinnier neckline next to it to make the edge of the plate. There, ladies and gentlemen, is your cupcake in your Wayne Tebow creation. All right, so next step, let's talk about how you can do repeti- Oh, stop. We know that one of the things about Wayne Tebow's art is that he likes really defined shadows. Now a shadow is dependent on where the light is coming from. So you decide what side you want your shadow to be, and then you're going to add, and my shadow is gonna go off the page. Let's get rid of this. So I have my shadow area right here. When the light shines in this direction, it casts a shadow on this side of the cupcake. So there's our defined shadow Wayne Tebow style. 
Now we know also that he colors in bright colors. So to complete this, you can use crayons and you can color this cupcake in very unconventional colors. You could make purple dough with pink icing and an orange cupcake holder on a blue plate. The more colorful, the better. You don't have to color it in a traditional way. But if you wanted to make brown for chocolate and yellow for the cup and pink icing and a nice blue plate, you can do that too. This is up to you however you want to make it. But let's talk about drawing more than one because we know Wayne Tebow liked repetition. And I happen to have something kind of already started that looks like this. And here's how we're going to do that. We're going to start off with the same basic uh, design. If you want them straight in a row, then you would draw, let me flip over a minute, you would draw your ovals all in a row. If you want them not to be in a row, then you would stagger them. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. First oval, one. I'm gonna put one down here in the middle, two. And then I'm gonna go back up here and make it even as I can. And I'm gonna put a third one here. Now, do you remember what's next? The lines that create the sides of the cupcake. And we're gonna come down on each one. Boom. And boom. Do you remember that round lines describe round things and that the bottom should up uh, duplicate the top or echo the top. So curvy line, curvy line. I love it. Let's get our table line in there right away. One, and we're going to come out the other side. Two, come out the other side. Three. My three cupcakes, well right now it looks like cups, are sitting on a table. And it's time for our blobs of icing. So we're going to start over to the side and we're going to curve down right along the edge. We're gonna do bump, bump. I'm gonna do a third bump. And come back down, bump, bump, bump. What do we need to do? A race inside the icing. It's not see-through. Now, if we're gonna do true repetition, we would make all three toppings the same. But we don't have to, we could make each one different. So I'm gonna curve along the bottom and I'm just gonna come up Almost looks like a chocolate kiss on top, yes? And now I'm going to erase not only the cupcake line that's in the middle of my icing, but the table line as well. Boom. And then I'm just going to do my third one with a double. Bump, bump. It looks like um, a lady's hair with a bun. Yeah? Okay. Now, we would follow along the same way with our curvy cup eds. We're gonna make our curvy cup edges. There we go. And then we're going to do, first you can just do the lines going up to each dip. And then you can double them. One, two, and so on. Same thing here, one. Make sure these go to the bottom and up. And then we're gonna curve and come right back down alongside of it, curve. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you could do a repetition of three cupcakes. And here, I'm gonna make the light coming from this direction, so the shadow would be over here. One, and this one would have a pointy shadow. Two, and this shadow is gonna bump right into the cupcake, so we're gonna stop. There are three defined shadows. Don't forget your extra. And that is how you do three repeating cupcakes. Got it. Strawberries, cherries, nothing at all, your choice. Okay, so we now have single cupcake and we have multiple cupcakes. All right, next let's do a slice of pie for those of you that love pie. All right, and if you can, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna kind of draw a diagonal line. There it is. I don't want it to be too small. And from there, I'm going to make 
a triangle. There it is. Make sure your line is diagonal. Okay. Now I'm going to slant inward and downward and I'm going to connect the two. Almost. We're almost there. Pie has that cool curvy edge on it. Moms sometimes use their thumb to press around when they're making a pie and it makes that curvy edge on your pie and I'm going to let it go over the edge and I'm going to let it go over the edge here. What do I need to do? Erase inside the crust. Make it all fancy. All right. Sometimes with a crust on top, moms put these little holes for steam to escape when they're baking the pie. You could do that if you like, but you don't have to. We're gonna see the crust is here and the crust is on the bottom. And then if you want to make this a layered pie, like it has layers in it, maybe strawberries, then whipped cream, then strawberries again, or apples and then nuts and cinnamon and apples, I'm not sure. You can add a roughly line in there for a filling. Sure can. Now we're gonna put a mark here and we're gonna go across and put a mark in the same spot and we're gonna put our pie on a plate and give it that extra little edge to our plate. Can you guess what's next? The table line. And there, ladies and gentlemen, would be your Wayne Tebow piece of pie. So there are some of you out there that are dying to do a cake. And I'm looking for more scrap paper. I'll let you feast your eyes on that for a minute. Let me get some more paper real quick. I ran out. Cake. Here we go. All right, now you already kind of know how to start this because you've done it. And that is with a large oval. Notice I have my paper in the portrait position. There it is, top of my cake. I'm gonna need straight sides coming down. And because this cake is curved, I wanna describe that curve with the bottom line echoing the top line and it is curvy, not perfectly straight. Oops, there we go. Draw a line, draw a line directly across from it and put your cake on a plate, boom. Cake we can have so much fun with, holy cow. One of the first things you could do is put a roughly icing all around the top edge of the cake. Now here's what I wanna do with that. I'm gonna lightly erase my cake edge because I don't want it anymore because the icing is covering the cake edge. So now I'm gonna make my bumpy line on the bottom too to meet the little curvies on the top. And wow, with that, we have just added some lovely icing at the top of the cake. Sometimes cakes have, we let the icing run down a little bit. Maybe some chocolate on a vanilla cake. Mm -hmm. Maybe pink on a lime green cake. Holy cow, I think Wayne Tebow would love that. And there's some icing running down. Sometimes decorators put that bump, bump, bump of decorative icing on the bottom too. So I'm gonna race lightly the bottom of my cake because that ruffly icing is going to be at the bottom of my cake now. So I'm gonna do my bump, bump, bump at the bottom. Do you have to have this much icing on both? You do not, okay? Oh, I forgot the edge of my plate. There it is. Yeah. There is no end to what you can do with this cake. You could add sprinkles on the sides like we talked about. The fancier, the more details you add, the better. If mom will allow, you could Google on the computer fancy cakes and see what you come up with with ideas that you could draw on your cake. So there's some sp sprinkles there. I might wanna put a heart right in the middle of my cake. If you're brave and you wanna write happy birthday, you could. On that same note, if you wanna do candles, do candles, double, 
however many you want on your cake. I'm gonna take my heart off. And of course the candle's not see-through, so I'd have to erase in between. Okay, so on and so forth. Now for my older students, that may be more adventurous. Let's talk about how we can make this a double-decker cake. You ready? I'm ready. Getting rid of my candles because we're gonna put another layer of cake on top. And here's how we're gonna do that. I am going to draw in reverse this time. I'm gonna put sides. One, two. I'm gonna put it right on top of the other cake. Yes. While I'm at it, I'm gonna erase in between those two lines now. All right, erase the back of your cake in between those two lines. Got it? Now we're going to connect these two lines with what? An oval. There you go. And we're gonna echo this line. Curved lines describe curved things and we're gonna put the curvy line there. Well, what do you know? I now have a cake on top of a cake. If you wanted to do a third one, you'd erase here and then you'd put your oval and that's how you can stack your cakes one on top of the other. Then you can decide, you could do each tier of the cake a different kind of design, okay? However you choose to decorate this cake is completely up to you. That's, that's the beauty of it. You can have lots of fun. Now I need a line here. Go all the way across, come out the side. There's my table. So you can surprise me with pie, with cupcakes, or a cupcake. You can do a single layer cake, double layer cake, whatever you decide. And here's the key. Start with the oval. Angle in for cupcakes but draw straight down for a cake. Got it? Don't forget to put it on a table. Don't forget to put it on a plate. Next up, how to color these in a Wayne, oh, stop. When I say in a Wayne Tebow style, I'm thinking of my shadow again. I'm just gonna make it kind of lights shining here, shadow be over here, and I'm just gonna make the shadow come right out from the plate, and when I color, I'll use a light gray or I'll use a color to color my shadow in so we can see it. All right, so I'm gonna show you a few examples now of coloring and what we're going to do with the background. Stay tuned. Okay, so what you can see here is I have taken my cupcake design and I have colored it with crayons. I want you to notice some things specifically is that I outlined especially in the icing area, a little darker and colored a little lighter. I do have a brown in here. It's hard to tell in this video, but this is a chocolate cupcake. And I used two colors to kind of blend and mix to make my cupcake holder and kind of did my strawberry. Now here's what you need to know. These tiny, tiny sprinkles and hearts. I colored with a marker. I don't see anything wrong with that because it's got a finer point and you can get in there and no one said you couldn't use markers and crayons on the same project anyway. So for tiny, tiny details, feel free to use a marker, okay? So now I'm gonna show you how to use watercolor to give a nice background to this picture. You need to know that crayon has wax in it, and so the paint will resist the areas that have been colored with crayon. So you can get pretty close to your outlines with your paintbrush and not have to worry about the paint coming in and ruining your coloring. Now you have to press hard with your crayons. There should be no white spaces. You know how I always tell you, get rid of the white spaces. And for younger students, outline, put up a fence, and then fill it in. No white spaces, okay? Your very best coloring for this project. So I'm gonna stick with the whole idea of bright colors in Wayne Tebow style, and I'm gonna make a green table. And I haven't quite decided about the top yet, but let's start with the green table, and let's learn how we can create a wash of color to paint with down in this area. All right, so I have my brush, of course, my uh, watercolors, and a cup of water. So what I'm gonna do first is dip in my water, and I'm going to do green, so I'm gonna just scrape my brush 
with that water into the green receptacle of paint. There it is, and I am creating a big puddle. We have talked about this before. I'm just letting it drip right in there or scrape the edge so that water fills this area. There we go. I'm gonna stir it a little, and now I'm gonna let my brush take some of that puddle, and I'm gonna move it over here into my tray. Please make sure your tray is clean before you do this. See how I'm bringing the puddle over? Just absorbing it in my brush and scraping it off into the tray. I can do this for quite a while, and I'm gonna make a lot of this wash, because I have a lot of background to paint. Don't be messy like me here, drippy, drippy. All right, now I'm gonna bring more over. Scrape your brush into that tray to get more puddle in there. And once we've done this, and we've got a nice big puddle to use right here, scraping my brush to get all the moisture with the color out. Pick up some more, scrape it off. Got it. This is a wash of color. Now you might want to take a piece of scrap paper, which you don't think I have any handy, do you? I'm gonna use it on this paper, and I'm gonna test out what color. That's just about right. If it's too dark, you'll add a little bit of water into your wash and spread it around. We are now going to paint with the puddle, and here's how I recommend you do that. I'm gonna paint. I'm going to paint right along the edge. Ooh, I've got a lot of paint. I've got a big puddle right here. I'm gonna use my brush to move that puddle over. And I am going to stay in this section. This crayon edge will help me, but if, if I paint inside here, it's not gonna help me totally. Yeah, and there we go. There's one section done, kinda like that. Painting with the puddle, again, I'm going to come underneath. Ooh, and whenever I have a big puddle of color, I'm gonna move it across the page. Notice as I run out of paint, it starts to get dry. I know I have to dip again. And then once I get away from my crayon edge, I'm just gonna back and forth, paint with the puddle fill in my whole bottom. Now you may say to me, Mrs. Barnes, what happens if I run out of puddle? Well, then you have to create a new one and you have to start over with it. So let's see how far we can go before we do that. All right. Now, if you've got darker and lighter areas, take and paint over your lighter ones and kind of blend it in until you meet it in tone. Be sure to paint all the way off the edge of the paper. There we go. There we go. I'm kind of liking this. Got a spot to fill here. Yep. All right, anywhere it looks light, I'm gonna go over it again. Now I'm nearly running out of a puddle here. Let's see if I can paint right along my edge. Will I finish? That's the question. Let's hope so. Looks like we might. I still got a little left I could drag in over here. Maybe a little water. And there we go. I made it. It's important to make enough to finish the whole area that you need. Yeah, got it. Boom. Now, when this dries, what I can do Add a little more here, increase my puddle. But this is gonna be a little darker now, right here. So as this starts to dry, I can come in right along the edge of my plate here, and that will create another shadow. See, I'm out kind of outlining it, and then blend it out a little bit. There we go. All right, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the bottom of my cupcake. Really off to a great start here. So now what I would probably do is I have a pink top, so I don't necessarily want to do a pink background. But yellow might complement this yellow-orange down here. 
so you know when you switch colors you have to clean your brush very well clean it very well and dry it and then you're going to repeat the process you're going to drag water into the yellow area making a big puddle in the color receptacle that this is this and i'm going to stir it up and then i'm going to scrape that puddle into my tray and that's where i'm going to paint from the puddle and remember i have a large background here so i am going to need a lot of puddle to paint with so don't get tired of this part keep scraping it in oh i'm out of water here time to add some more increase that puddle there we go i've got the puddle i stir it around and now i'm going to move it over to my tray i should have enough puddle to finish my background now and i think i do so i am going to test it on my paper see if it's dark enough yep i like it remember if it's too dark add some water and then the very first thing i recommend is going around the outline very carefully outline and then you'll be able to fill in your background outline fence works here too and fill now i confess i have a little marker up here in this strawberry and if i hit that marker with water it's going to blur so i'm going to be very careful painting around my strawberry looking back i should have done it with all crayon but this is okay now you may notice my paper is getting dark because it's soaking up so much water you have the good white drawing paper so you should not paint along your edge here you should not have your that problem and it looks like I can paint freely now because I've outlined all the important parts. And I can finish my background of my Wayne Tebow cupcake. All right. Now I'm gonna come back in just a second. Oh, I wanna show you something here. Because when I come back in a second, I'm gonna show you a second way you could do this other than crayon, okay? But I ran out of puddle. I really can't finish this big space. So, I'm going to start the process all over. Bring water. Ooh, looks like I got a little green in there. Eee! Take the puddle, bring it over here into your tray. Yeah. And then start painting and finish it up. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a little upside down at this moment. But I have, use your brush. Ooh, looky here, back and forth. It's hard for me to tell if this is even because the paper is showing so dark as it absorbs the water. So if this isn't quite yellow enough when the paper dries, I can come back and add more color. Looks like I might need some right there. Be sure to paint to the edges. Be sure to outline with the paint first very carefully before you just go wild with your brush. When you're finished, you should have a really great example of a Wayne Tebow cupcake. All right, I'm going to come back with a cake and show you another way to complete this project. Okay, to finish up quickly and show you that second way of doing your cake with markers and using them to paint with, here I have my three layer cake and plate all finished and I have some markers and I have, have begun the process of outlining the cake. Well, first I outlined with Skinny Sharpie, as you can see, and then I'm outlining sections that I want to be colored with the marker. Now, you may already noticed that down at the bottom where the plate is, I've already started painting. And here's the secret to getting this done without making a horrendous mess and that is to paint a section of the time and let it dry. So I'm gonna outline with the colors that I want. And then I'm going to paint. And here's how that looks. You're going to take your brush with some clear water and you are going to 
scrape your brush well and then you are going to kind of wet the marker and then you can paint with it and I'm coming back and kind of catching the spot that I need to catch there was a little white space here I've let my icing dry and then I can come back in and get a little closer now I'm switching colors so I'm gonna go to wash and scrape 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 very important notice I have painted all of the icing I've let it dry and now I can come in and soften up the orangey yellowy color that I've got here and then I can paint a little better right next to that pinky color if I paint again wet next to wet they're really going to blend together and blur. So if you do this method, you have to be sure, very careful. Now you can kind of see here that I've kind of touched into the pinky purple. So I'm gonna wash my brush, clear water, make sure it's nearly scraped off dry almost. And then I can loosen the paint up Ooh, now I got into that marker. Let me show you what to do in a case like this. Squeeze your brush, all the water out of it, and come and run right down next to where the two colors started to blend. And then we'll stay away from that area for a while. Okay, so squeeze your brush and vacuum it up. Scraping my brush, I'm gonna move away from that spot now. And I'm going to start working down here. Now do you see why I left a white space around those two colors? I don't want them to be too close so that they wind up blurring together. The point of your brush will help you get in these tiny spots. If you happen to touch into the pinky purple, then you wash your brush. Okay, and it's kind of hard to do when you're in these little tiny corners. So you just do the best you can. Okay, and get a little more marker here. Now, if you find out, well, this is kind of pale, you can always come back in with your marker while it's damp, if you like. Add a darker line right there. This is actually like a yellow-orange. Yellow would be too pale, I think. And then when I rub on that, it gets a little darker color and then I can come in and finish, okay? Oh, I see spots I missed. And you would continue in this way, little by little, letting it dry in between to create your beautiful cake. Now, one more thing I'll show you before I let you get to work on your own, and that is this. Up here at the top of the cake, I have a plan. So the very first thing I'm going to do is paint that and let it dry. When it is dry, I will come in with a darker color, probably this pinky, I'm trying to keep a theme of colors here. I'll come in with the pinky purple and I'll make rings at the top of the cake. Okay, I'm getting a little close there, so I'm gonna stop. All right, whenever two colors bump, wash your brush and move away. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color over the inside color right there, because when these dry, I can come back with a, a coordinating color and color those centers in. Wash my brush. And really, that's all there is to it. Too much water. When you have too much water, squeeze the water out of your brush. Come back and right on top of the petal, puddle, excuse me, petal and puddle, um, you can kind of suck up that extra wet, puddly stuff. Do not have a whole lot of water on your brush. It's a disaster. All right. Did you see me just do that? Fooey. All right, so I'm going to go on the same way until I finish my cake, background and all. All right, so as promised, this may not be quite dry up there, but I am going to come in and I can color right on top and add some rings, some designs. I don't really 
crazy about that color, but you see how it goes. Yes? I could even come in with marker later and say, well, I'm gonna add some fancy decorations like I'm a cake decorator right here, right on top. As long as the marker is darker, it'll go right on top of the dried, dried um, marker that you've already painted. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna catch those centers. Color right on top. As long as it's semi-dry, you should be good. It won't blend. Boom. All right. See how that's done? So I hope you really have fun with your Wayne Tebow cakes and cupcakes and treats. You can try it with crayon and just paint the background, or you can go all marker painting. Totally up to you. At any rate, I look forward to seeing what you come up with as you post on the parent portal. Happy creating, hope you enjoyed the art by Wayne Tebow. Have a good week.